So I'm sure many of you have heard by now that the Xbox versus FTC case has been decided in favor of Xbox. And when this deal gets finalized, this will be one of the biggest acquisitions ever in American history. And I waited to release this video because I wanted to see what people had to say about it, like Phil Spencer, the FTC themselves, as well as the judge also all had things to say about this case. And what does this mean for Xbox moving forward? And how much are people getting paid? Because the Activision CEO, he's getting some cash so if you guys like news and informational videos make sure you tap that like button and it's the best way to help out the video and channel within that all famous youtube algorithm so let's get right into those details so let's hear from the man himself phil spencer about the ruling on this case on twitter phil spencer said we're grateful to the court for swiftly deciding in our favor the evidence showed that activision blizzard deal is good for the industry and the ftc's claims about console switching multi-game subscription services and cloud don't reflect the realities of the gaming market since we first announced this deal our commitment to bringing more games to more people people on more devices has only grown. We've signed multiple agreements to make Activision Blizzard games, Xbox first party games, and Game Pass games all available to more players than they are today. We know that players around the world have been watching this case closely, and I'm proud of our efforts to expand players' access to choice throughout this journey. Sounds like a bit of a victory lap, which is kind of the case right now, because most markets out there have accepted this merger, except for the UK markets over cloud gaming, which we'll talk a little bit later in this video. But this really was the last major hurdle for Xbox, Activision, Blizzard King to merge together. Now that's been accepted by a judge and the FTC found weak evidence to try to counter this so this is gonna happen and if you're an xbox player or even a activision blizzard player or even a king player this merger is gonna be benefiting all of you guys but if you're a sony player nintendo player well actually you'll have some reassurances here one of the judges said that microsoft has committed in writing in public and in court to keep call of duty on playstation for 10 years on parity with Xbox, and even made an agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to the Switch. Which if you wanna play Call of Duty in the Switch, I mean, more power to you on that one. I certainly remember watching the Wii versions of Call of Duty being quite unique. Ultimately, I would say it is a good thing that this merger did get some scrutiny by the FTC to really get it down in writing what Microsoft is planning to do with this merger because this is a huge consolidation under one umbrella. Not an entire monopoly, but certainly a mass grouping of huge titles under one umbrella. And this is the FTC's reaction to the ruling. FTC spokesperson Douglas Farrer said, about this that we are disappointed in this outcome given the clear threat this merger poses to open competition in cloud gaming subscription services and consoles in the coming days we'll be announcing our next step to continue our fight to preserve competition and protect consumers which i don't know that sounds like a bit of a vendetta almost for the government like wants to go after microsoft and activision and this whole entire merger though it does seem like the ftc chair Lena Khan has seems to be a bit of a chip on her shoulder against big tech companies as this is her second major loss against different types of mergers. Brad Smith, who is the vice chair and president at Microsoft, even stated this, saying we're grateful for the court in San Francisco for this quick and thorough decision and hope other jurisdictions will continue working towards a timely resolution. As we've demonstrated consistently throughout this process, we are committed to working creatively and collaboratively to address regulatory concerns. Pretty standard there, nothing too crazy, but I think the main thing now with Microsoft Activision Blizzard King is now like the next big hurdle that we still need to finish up and that is the cloud gaming issue that's currently going on in the UK. Interestingly here said that minutes after the judge's decision both the CMA that's the UK's blocker right there and Microsoft have agreed to pause their legal battle in the UK to negotiate how the Activision Blizzard deal could be modified to address the CMA's cloud gaming concerns. Even though one of the Xbox leads Sarah Bond said that Xbox cloud gaming service is actually their least popular feature as mainly people just use it to play the game while it's downloading. Obviously, there's a lot of future potential when it comes to cloud gaming, but the latency is still significant enough where it's not really something people want to utilize a whole lot. But now that the judge has ruled within the US about saying that, hey, all this is good to go, 
we could see some things with the CMA changing when it comes to their stance and the whole thing. Because literally they are the only thing stopping this merger from completely going across seamlessly. I'm sure a big question moving forward is how are these big bucks going to be distributed? I mean, there's 69 billion dollars being distributed over to those massive companies. So people are getting paid and specifically Bobby Kotick. And multiple sources have confirmed this saying that Bobby Kotick is set to make over $400 million once this deal closes. And I'm sure he's not the only CEO getting well paid for this acquisition as well. So say hypothetically this deal does fully go through, when can we expect to see it come around for us gamers? When are we gonna start seeing the benefits? Well, it's going to be quite some time because when Microsoft completed their Bethesda acquisition, we didn't really see many games come forward until quite a few months later, just being able to be downloaded onto Game Pass. But now we're really starting to see it, especially with Starfield, when this acquisition really will come to change the experience of when it comes to these developers working with Microsoft. Because this Microsoft Bethesda deal finalized back in March of 2021. So we'll have a few years to see maybe if Call of Duty will come to Game Pass. So I wouldn't expect Modern Warfare 3 to be released on Xbox Game Pass anytime soon. We do know it's Modern Warfare 3 as a judge did leak the information out. I covered it in a previous video here on the channel. But could we see Call of Duty 2024? Throughout 2024, could we see different games from Activision Blizzard being put on the Game Pass? Highly likely. Again, we're just kind of waiting for the UK to ease their concerns about cloud gaming. And once I happens we're full engines ready to go funny thing is who's been quiet throughout this entire day right it's been jim ryan from playstation hasn't said a thing and i think it's mainly because from what he said in court definitely did not line up with his public statements where publicly he was saying oh my god this is anti-competitive this is going to ruin the market call of duty is going to xbox effectively he's been saying that and then when you put him on court on the stand what do you actually mean by he's, he literally said we'll be fine we'll be more than fine that's if xbox even takes call of duty away from playstation which xbox said for the next 10 years that's not even a possibility though we do know that sony's agreement with activision is ending in 2024 though we have heard that possibly it might end in 2023 so when legal obligations and contract fulfillments are complete, what is going to happen, especially with Call of Duty and these other franchises from Activision Blizzard? How are they going to interact with the PlayStation ecosystem? It's going to be very interesting. And we do know from this court case that Microsoft was worried that Starfield would become a PlayStation exclusive as PlayStation and Bethesda were in talks before the acquisition. And we know how much PlayStation loves their exclusives. So my thoughts on the whole thing is that as me as a person who buys into the xbox ecosystem especially with game pass various other games you guys watch this channel you know i'm a big halo fan i mean like look at this wall right back here right i mean like you got some halo right here that me personally i'm excited about this as some of my favorite games are halo call of duty when it comes to shooters and with this acquisition could we see some possible crossovers from various games say like say put a Master Chief into Call of Duty as like a bundle you can buy in there. Maybe do some pay to win in Call of Duty. We can spawn in with a rocket launcher or something stupid. Maybe, maybe not. We did think about this, right? These crossover potentials when Microsoft bought Bethesda and we thought, oh, Doom Slayer might come into Halo or vice versa. But then we haven't really seen much crossover. Microsoft has been known to be very hands-off when it comes to game development for the most part. They really just kind of guide the ship and then they let all the workers work. But we do know with Big Daddy Xbox and Microsoft, it does seem like when they want a game release, they'll release it anyways, as we know from the release of Halo Infinite being lackluster and Red Falls release being, well, rather disastrous. So my biggest fear is that I hope long term we don't see these awesome franchises from Activision Blizzard and King being driven into the ground and taken advantage of for revenue sake, but we'll just have to wait and see how that actually plays out. Activision Blizzard are certainly no strangers to releasing content maybe too soon or taking advantage of their franchises to maximize profit. I'm just curious how Microsoft is going to stay financially afloat during this time because between the Bethesda and the Activision Blizzard acquisitions, they've dropped nearly $80 billion to acquire these franchises. I mean, according to Google, from March of 23, Microsoft made 52, almost $53 billion in revenue. 
with a profit margin of 30 with a profit margin of roughly 35 percent so for me this is some really exciting stuff the future of gaming is looking quite interesting with one of these craziest acquisitions ever in american history this consolidation is a little scary just because you have less options right less competition means less innovation but microsoft is still very much in their deep third place when it comes to the gaming wars right between playstation and nintendo i think this acquisition though over time would most likely benefit Microsoft to see him a strong number two. I don't think it'll take over Nintendo, but only time will tell.